welcome back to Winterfest and this is Christmas or any winter celebration that you celebrate and it's fun and and today I have another person coming to talk on the channel and it's great it's Greg it's Gregzilla and he's gonna introduce himself again to you this year yay hey everybody the weather outside sure be frightful <laughs> but it isn't this show so delightful I'm Gregzilla and I'm here to talk about animation and drawing and stuff I have a very important question what is your favorite holiday tradition, and why is it watching Polar Express? Oh, I'm glad you asked. It, because it's <laughs> the Polar Express film has just got everything a Christmas movie could want. It's got snow, it's got a train, it's got Tom Hanks's luscious mustache. <laughs> it's got creepy, disgusting, uncanny valley children. Oh, and yeah. it's got, even, spoiler alert, it's even got Aerosmith for a little bit. So I forgot I about that. Else. Yeah, you got Steven Tyler, the elf, screaming at you in for one shot. Which is everything I've always wanted in cinema. I don't think any movie since then has been brave enough to do anything of that caliber. <laughs> brave enough? All right. Yeah, w would you be brave enough to make Steven Tyler an elf and have him scream in your movie? I don't think I don't so. Think, I don't think anyone can claim that. But the Polar Express can. We need more Polar yeah. Express. We need a sequel made by Michael Bay, and one day we will get it. Mm -hmm. Or an anime sequel. Intense. Anime Polar Express would be fun. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I could get into more like Infinity Train territory. Oh shit, that'd be actually great. Hmm. The Polar Infinity Train. Trigger, if you're listening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Trigger did Star Wars. They can do whatever they want. Oh my god, did you see that? They gave us lightsaber selettos. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, but I saw the trailer. Um, Spoilers. Like, this looks like Kill a Kill, but with lightsabers. I'm, I'm down. It does. It does. I watched it. It was super weird. And I think you're going to like it. Speaking of cool things, like lightsaber solitos, 2021 is almost over. But can you share one positive thing that occurred to you this year? Yeah, I got to finally meet up with some of my online buddies, IRL. <laughs> so my some of my art friends. It was a lot of fun. We got to walk around at SoCal and you get some nice food and just chat and it was just like meeting up with uh, with them online but in real life and it was a lot of fun. And I haven't ever done that before. I never like visited anyone that I've only met online and talked to them in real life before. So that was a lot of fun. It's funny because I got Kevin yesterday on an on the same interview and he said the exact same thing. His positive thing this year was the Cali trip. <laughs> this is so <laughs> <Yeah>. great. <laughs> Good old Kasevin Vin. Kasevin Nissen. Yeah, he was full of such energy. He was jumping all over stuff. He was climbing things. He, Lovely. Yeah, that, we that's Kevin. We found a statue Kevin. of a big man and he climbed on it. <laughs> of course he did. And um, now we're going to jump into the meat of things. <laughs> Tell us more about your work. Do you... Okay. Legit question. Do you notice so dif something different depending on how you hold your pencil when you work? Because, you know, somebody, some people like hold it like a toddler holding a crayola pen with like their fist and they, they draw good. Mm -hmm. And some people barely touch it like a feather and it also draw good. But I'm always curious about that. Yeah, so I had that this conversation with a few of my friends earlier. We were all like comparing how we hold our pen. So I hold it like, let me do a little drawing demonstration. So we got the pen here the thing. So I got finger here, finger here, and then we got ring finger kind of behind it, and then thumb. So I got my, pretty much every finger except my pinky is on it. So that's my, that's my useless little pinky there. This will look like something in a second, I hope. I think you're holding it similar to what I do. Huh. Yeah, it's like, kind of like the, the baby method but not quite. Oh my god, we hold our pen the same. Like, I have my hand on top of the tablet and it's exa exactly the same shape. Huh. Interesting. But yeah. on the opposite side, because I'm a lefty. A lefty, eh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Pretty swell. Uh, but yeah, it's like, this is not really an accurate drawing at all. I'm, I'm looking at my hand while drawing my hand. It's a little spatial conundrum. But yeah, I hold it. Because some people I know, they just do like, oh, they have one, their index finger on top, and then their thumb, and then it rests on their middle finger, and then the other two fingers are both doing nothing. Yeah, that's... And weird. it's not... That never worked for me. Mm. 
and I guess you hold your stylus the same way you would hold like your regular pen. Yeah, yeah, I hold my pens and pencils and stylus exactly the same. All right, that's cool. That's cool. Now, for uh, for my new Huion tablet that I got, the on like uh, certain drawing programs, the tilt function is a little more sensitive, and so it's it makes more of a difference when I hold my pen like straight to the paper or when it's a little more on the angle. And so I have to get used to a little bit more to. Like, if I want to have a small line, I draw it with the pen more, like, uh, perpendicular to the tablet. And then, if I want to have more of a, a thick stroke, like I'm holding a pencil, then it's more like I hold it on an angle. But I usually hold it more on an angle when I'm just drawing naturally. And, oh yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, I know we both worked, or used to work, on, like, free projects and all that, but we... You slash I as well. <laughs> Uh, do less anymore. Can we kind of discuss about that? Because I often hear a lot of students like just getting out of school being like, oh, I'll never work on anything for free. Uh, it's not great. And, and to a certain extent, it's true. But like, how do we dif differentiate um, free work that is actually good for you <laughs> and free work that is not good for you? Yeah, so it's like, it can be definitely hard to decide when it's like, all right, is this free work that's just a fun little thing to join, or is this free work that's taking advantage of me? Mm -hmm. And it, it's like, I think you sometimes you just gotta kind of try and gauge what kind of people are working on it, or if they're being upfront about the details. Like, the the main thing that you and I have like been kind of steer, steering away from lately, even though it's that's all good intentions, is just that like collabs, yeah. like reanimate collabs, like um, like I recently did the ultimate showdown video reanimate collab which should be out soon i think which um just the idea of like a bunch of people coming together and reanimating a video into their own styles and stuff mm -hmm. those those usually have just good intentions they're just trying to get a bunch of people together for a fun little project and i think that's all good if you feel like making time for that that's cool and i think that's a good way to uh get to meet people and work with others as like a beginner or someone who's looking to get into more groups of fellow artists to make connections with but uh yeah i and you have sort of stepped away from those kind of projects just because now that we're working on more paying gigs and <laughs> more jobs that we need to focus on it's not easy to juggle those kind of projects alongside uh, paying work that we need to prioritize yeah. on top of personal projects too if you want to like work on your own ideas too then <clears> that just adds another thing into the big cauldron of stuff you gotta juggle together yeah i think sometimes i talk about like the like the three things i'm gonna try to draw it <laughs> like you have your work <laughs> you have your um free time and then you have your personal project yeah and i think it's hard it's hard to have more than three so once you have a job and a personal project going on you would to get into these um, collabs and stuff. You would need to sacrifice your free time, and that's not something you should do. You should always have mm -hmm. some free time. But you know, when you don't have that big of a uh, exhausting job, you can still fit those in there. So, or if you don't have a personal project and you want to fit these in, that's that's great. It's just that I think I think you and I both have some big personal projects. <laughs> So like, yeah, less time. Yeah, so it's like when I have, if I'm trying to work on a personal project and I also need to work on paid work and I need to work on this collab that I agreed to be in, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bit much. Yeah. Well, these are interesting points. Thank you for sharing. Speaking of project, um, that is something I ask everyone this year uh, because since I teach to lots of students and freshly graduated people, I often hear, oh, I, I keep getting refused a job and nobody turns back my emails and I'll, I'll be jobless forever. I'll never be accepted anywhere. So sometimes I ask uh, everyone out there, uh, was there some project where you got turned down? Let me think. It's been a while since I've like actually just straight up applied to a project out of the blue. Yeah, and that's, a, and that's a, also a very important point. After a certain while, um, you don't apply to projects. Sometimes they just come to you. So that's also something to to consider um, in that Yeah, it's hunt. like, 
yeah, I feel almost bad because I almost feel like my career so far has been like an unusually accepting <laughs> in terms of just like because when I started out, I was just messaging just kind of like other YouTubers people, and they were just like, "Oh yeah, sure, we'd like to work with you." Mm -hmm. A lot, to, and it was a little more small scale back then. And now a lot of those same YouTubers are like working with entire studios and in like animation departments and stuff. And it's like I I kind of got in on the ground floor of a lot of that stuff when it came to just making yourself a, a YouTube animator and stuff like that. And so I didn't have a lot of times where I like applied to a project or a studio or anything and just got turned down because I just didn't really apply that much. It was more just like I was stumbling into a bunch of fun little uh, little uh, like YouTube projects and stuff like that. And then eventually it was less of an idea of me seeking out jobs and more just like, oh, this new project is in one of our like friend circles. It's, it's popping up and would you like to be a part of it? And then those jobs kind of got to be more and more high profile as things went on. But uh, so yeah, and to this day so far, I've not actually applied to an actual studio like for uh, like non freelance work. So I haven't had that experience yet. But I'm thinking probably within the next year or so, I'll probably start looking into that a little bit more just because I do need to start getting a little bit more consistent money brought in. And then we'll see about when the no's start coming in. That's really interesting. And also a good takeaway with this, lots of students around me are like, oh, I don't want to work in the studio. I want to do my own thing, which is fine. Like there's multiple ways to be a freelancer and working on uh, independent gigs is one of them. But the important thing is that you have to put yourself out there because if you want gigs to come to you, <laughs> you have to be a you. So you have to be something <laughs> on the internet. Exactly. So like fan art or or personal animation you put out there, like just put yourself out there, kids. Even if it's work in progress, people need to see the stuff if you want to get a chance somewhere. Yeah, so you, you do have to, if you want to get like any opportunities of some sort, you're going to have to show your work to somebody. You like, you can't just sit in your room and draw things in your sketchbook only for you. <laughs> you're going to have to, at some point, bite the bullet and say, I'm going to show this to people whether that's applying for a job or just putting on an uh, art station or any social media, Twitter or whatever. Because eventually, like, some people get to the point where they just kind of get jobs coming their way, and I'm lucky enough that I get to have that opportunity a lot just because I put my work out there, and then if I have a, if I have a job that lets me share the works in progress, which is always really nice, I can put those on Twitter, and then that gets more eyes on me. And then that just it just makes you more appealing if you can keep improving and keep sharing more of your stuff. And uh, so, yeah, it's totally within the realm of possibility that you just get jobs coming your way if your work is good and you share it. But that means you got to work at it and you got to share it. You got to put yourself out there and create oops and create your own opportunities sometimes. So just yeah, so so do it, people. <laughs> um, and uh, da -da -da -da. okay, so uh, now we're gonna just jump to some animation specific questions. Yeah. So that is one that I received on Twitter. So that's somebody asking for that. What part of the workflow do you enjoy the best? And what parts are more challenging? Because animation is so wide, right? So there is some things we like a bit more than some others. And it changes, yeah, the, so. Yeah, totally. It can change from project to project even. But uh. A lot of the times I find the hard part is getting started on a on a scene or a shot. Oh my god, yes. When, like, all right, nothing is laid out yet, so I have to really decide what's uh, what's going to happen in the scene, what what the movement is going to be, what the timing is going to be, and like when there's nothing but a blank sheet of paper in there or a storyboard or a simple storyboard. It's like, all right, there's a lot of pressure on me in these early stages to get it to a foundation where the later stages are going to be easier. And so... Like, working out the first few hurdles is always the tough part, and then once you get, like, all right, the rough animation is is uh, acceptable for now, and it looks like I, I know where the pieces are and which where the anatomy is going, then after that, working for, like, just cleaning it up and making it a little more tidy, that's much, much easier than starting from scratch. But yeah, as, a part, as far as the parts of the job that I enjoy, I enjoy a lot of it, and it, a lot of times it does depend on the scene itself, like... 
it can be hard to rough out a scene from scratch, but it is fun to do that for like crazy action scenes or oh uh, yes, <laughs> or very wild just ideas. Just seeing nothing turn into something really crazy is a lot of fun. And then, and then also just the later parts where you're like lip syncing or cleaning something up that can be fun just in the sense that it's more relaxing, and you can like you can more like during during just like the cleaning up phase, it's easier to put on a podcast or a show while you're working and doing that or talking to people, which is harder to do in the earlier stages. Yeah, because you have to focus and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's always the infamous page of the animator survival kit where the, where it was at Milk Call is yelling at uh, Richard Williams. Oh, the music kids. thing? Yep, to stop listening to music <laughs> while you're working. And I think that depends on the person, but I've like I've always been very advert to that page, but now I'm trying to like think mm, maybe I should give it a chance. Maybe I should not turn the old animation master down. Maybe I should see what he's really got to say about that. And I try not to listen to as much like invasive material while I'm working. Like um, I can't watch a TV show while I'm working or a movie really, unless I've seen it a million times. Yeah, me neither. But I see so many people do it. I'm like, how? Like. <laughs> How do you do that? Like music, yeah. I get it, and I couldn't live or animate it without music. So that that thing, I'm like, mm, not sure where I agree. Yeah. But yeah, TV show, I don't know how people do it. That's insane. Yeah, because music, I I can listen to and work for the most part. I don't think it has much of an adverse effect on me. Because music is like I'm not actively thinking. Uh, like I have to pay attention to what they're doing. I'm not following a story. I don't have to remember which characters which or whatever. Just, I'm just listening to it. It sounds nice in my ears. Do you have some thoughts on how to animate on one, two, three, four, five, six, or tenth? <laughs> tenth. <laughs> Maybe uh, not. I, like <laughs> I, I animate like 24s personally. Mm -hmm. Wondering a second. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, for uh, yeah, for those not in the know, that just referring to how long a drawing stays on screen mm -hmm. while it's playing back. So. An animation on threes means it stays on screen for three frames, and therefore it's going to be longer than a than a drawing that stays on w for only one frame. So it'll go by faster if it's on a lower number of frames. And um, so when you see really really smooth looking animation that is moving pretty fast, like a like a Disney movie or like something like Prince of Egypt or like the old DreamWorks style, that's probably on ones or twos, and then something like anime, like a talking scene in an anime where characters are moving a little more jittery, a little more uh, choppy, that could be on threes or more. Often, oftentimes it'll be on fours in anime. Yeah, like often. Simple scenes. So, um, but yeah, when it comes to that, I myself, I love working on uh, twos and threes mostly. And for my own personal projects, I would love to use threes. Some some projects I work on, it's more like they want you to stick it with ones and twos. Like, mm -hmm. Hell of a Boss, they mostly wanted me to use ones and twos. Like, threes were okay here and there. But um, they didn't want it to look like choppy like anime, so it was mostly twos. And then, uh, but yeah, if it's for my own personal project, I am totally okay with using threes because I think it looks cool. Yeah. I think the choppiness is not a bad thing at all. Yeah, I think, I think it's dynamic and fun. It's like quirky. I like, I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think so too. And I think a lot of times it actually does end up looking like, even for smooth movements or wacky movements, threes can work just because the choppiness kind of makes it like you fill in some of it with your imagination. Like, not every single detail of the movement has to be filled out by the animator, I don't think. Yeah, because your brain is smart enough to know what's going on with the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like... Um, yeah, and it's like, obviously, if people didn't like choppy animation at all, like, something like Into the Spider-Verse wouldn't have caught on the way it did. I don't think. Because, like, that, that movie, like, 3D animation can just interpolate the frame so that everything is totally smooth. And that movie specifically removed frames or made frames yes. uh, last longer to make it look more choppy, like a stop-motion film. And it was awesome. Everybody loved it. And it's because it's like I don't know. It just it just makes it feel more like something made by humans, and feel like something like oh yeah, it's it's limited, but that means the audience kind of participates in filling in some of the gaps in in their mind. 
And I just think it just looks snappy and it looks fun. It looks like it has like punch. Lots of punch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like sometimes the, uh, uh, just like the animation of something on threes, even like a crazy, like elaborate action, it can just look like it's snapping into place more uh, heavily when it's on threes. Because it's very easy to over animate something and make it look too soft and squishy. It yeah, is. Just like you, you add too many frames and then it ends up. Oh, it's, it looks like this doesn't look like believable anymore. It looks odd. Yeah, lots of trigger animation are really good at spacing out two, threes, and fours and stuff. So if you want a good example, I think you can watch these frame by frame, mm -hmm. like I do, because I'm a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And you can always go to uh, Sakugaburu, the the website, right. which has like extensions and stuff where you can look at things frame by frame for a lot of anime and other like non-anime animation. Yeah, I'll put it into the description if people don't know about that site. It's amazing. Yeah, that that site's really cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like trigger. Especially like even when their like frame count isn't too high, their their character designs are just so cool, and their uh, their facial expressions are always super extreme, and the poses are always amazing, and so like you, that goes a long way. You don't have to have Disney level smoothness in order to make the the action come across right. It just as long as you're you're getting the idea across in various ways. So they use extreme posing, extreme composition techniques. They'll have characters change size randomly, <laughs> like in Kill la Kill, <laughs> because like they have the one guy who's constantly huge on screen, and he keeps changing size just because it makes him look more intimidating. Oh yeah, that's true. Sense. Yeah, like that character uh, Gamaguri, he's just an intimidating guy, so they literally just draw him really big, even though it doesn't make sense. Like we know that put putting the camera up or down can make someone more or less intimidating, but this paired with making it bigger just makes the whole thing bigger it's so cool mm -hmm. yeah and that's all done with like uh like some of the more elaborate action scenes in that show they'll animate it on twos to get a little smoothness smoothness here and there but yeah a lot of it is on threes or more just because uh it doesn't need to be super smooth it just needs to look cool yeah, I think the only thing that bugs me lately, because now we're, we're, we were talking about Trigger, uh, like in Premiere, for example, they did use lots of CG, like 3D models, and that's great. I love when people do that because it's useful and stuff, but sometimes I wonder why do, why do they keep it on once? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's so weird that it's so fluid versus the animation that is less fluid in terms of like image count. I'm like, oh, sometimes I, I wish there was a release of like <laughs> those things with step 3D instead of tween, but... Um, that's life. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a matter of like making it uh, fit well together. I think a lot of shows have that problem is that like the 3D animation looks good and the 2D animation looks good, but they don't follow the same rules. I think my favorite 2D, 3D integration was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. They did it so well and it's like more than 10 years old, but it worked so well because the, th the 3D is animated on threes and it works. Well, yeah, they did with... um. Uh, Envy. Was it Envy? I guess I'll oppose that a little bit and say that I think he looks kind of weird <laughs> in those scenes. Like even because I think they do, they do use threes, which is good, but he's moving way more than the other characters. I do agree with that. Sometimes when it's a still frame and everybody's still, he's, he's like fidgeting in the background. Yeah, that that is annoying. I do agree it's, with yeah. that. It's because he'll have like an idle animation, which other anime characters don't unless they're like breathing heavily or something. You can tell he has like a really smooth like breathing up and down animation that they just remove frames from. And I'm like, if you're making an anime with one style, you kind of, I think, ideally you'd want that to follow the same rules. Like you have this big model that you can animate more easily, but if the other characters are staying still while they talk, you should probably follow that same rule there too. Yeah, that is what absolutely is true. Because they used it for vehicles and tank. And I think that was great because they were not that fluid, but I forgot about Envy, that's right. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, a good point oh, yeah, here, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but but ve vehicles, absolutely, I'll say, yeah, don't don't kill yourself by drawing vehicles over and over again. Use 3D for vehicles. But Greg, what about the, the honor? honor? <laughs> doing I ain't got no honor. <laughs> Me too. I lost it long ago. Um, on the subject of like reference and 3D and stuff, how do you use reference and? Like, do you have some advice on finding quality reference? I know you mentioned the Sekuga website, and that is a mm -hmm. that is one heck of a good website to reference from. Yeah, for sure. That's like that's a good reference site for like uh, other animators and other like cartoons to study from if you want to see just like how how other animators are doing it, how the masters of the craft are doing it, and then um, 
for like real life reference or photos or whatever, there's all sorts. You can go to Pinterest. You can go to you can go to like there's special websites, especially for just figure drawing and anatomy and stuff. There's like. Usually it's better to find sites like that because I find that Google search is actually not that great at finding what you need. You get a lot of just like random crap <laughs> when you Google search. You'll get a lot of like not the category that you want. And it's um, it's easier if you go to like either Pinterest or just other like image board websites. And there's there's other like stock photo websites and uh, or books of just anatomy. There's one I use called uh, Bodies in Motion is a website that I go to sometimes where it's uh, they have like, videos of people just doing actions, but you can look at them frame by frame and study them for figure drawing. And I, that's a good website. It has a lot of like detailed, muscular looking people. And like website, us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I draw all day and sit down all day and I'm just packing on the, the muscle meat. Oh, but I think you said a very strong point there by like looking at reference that you, that it's not you um i think that's also a, a, um, a big thing like going on these websites sometimes can be really really better than recording your own reference i mean your own reference if you if that's the only thing you have that's great and like for a face or whatever but i think animators are great animators but they're not the greatest actor sometimes yeah like i i don't record myself too much just because um I don't know, I feel like it just kind of breaks my flow. Mm -hmm. I have to get up and record myself and then sit back down and look at myself. But um, yeah, a lot of times I even just forget that's even an option. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can see like, if you focus on yourself too much, you might get tunnel vision and you might not be thinking about like, is this looking even natural enough to use as a reference? Because you still want to keep a good amount of energy and a good amount of just like naturalness to your work. And if you're if you're going through too many tries to like perfect the pose you need to draw in the mirror, then you might end up looking like, all right, I have my elbow here and my knee here and my thigh here, <laughs> and it's like, all right, now you just look like a bunch of little weird angles of a person not doing anything. Yeah, and I mean, you weren't at samurai. We don't know how to uh, how to wield a katana sword. So like, don't record yourself thinking you know how to sword fight because you don't, <laughs> or maybe Who you is do. Samurai warrior. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you do. Maybe you do, and that would be great. But yeah. If you're a samurai, do whatever you want. I'm not going to tell you how to be a samurai. If you're a samurai, can you please DM me? <laughs> I want a samurai, a samurai friend. Like, comment, subscribe. Yes, please. I want. I want a samurai friend. You know that. That could be cool. Learning the way of the sword. Oh, and last thing about reference. Um, like, how do you? usually use them. Is there like some ways you use them more than others? Uh, yeah, so in my daily work, I usually just try and find like a uh, reference of like certain poses. I don't necessarily look at videos a lot. Mm -hmm. I do more in my like spare time when I'm just studying. But um, a lot of times if I'm having trouble like with an angle of a certain pose and I'm like, oh, I can't draw this shoulder from this angle, I'll try and find just a picture of a of a person doing that pose or at a, at a similar camera angle just because a lot I always run into little roadblocks here and there when I'm animating where I'm like hmm I'm not entirely sure how this part is moving in 3d space so I should try and find just a, a reference or a picture or a small like gif or clip of someone doing a similar motion just so I can kind of get an idea in my brain of like all right that's how it's working in 3d space but uh yeah I don't I don't necessarily look at like videos a ton just because it's hard to find exactly like oh i need a video of this but if i type that into youtube that's going to get me all sorts of random crap yep. but uh, but yeah there's all sorts of different ways and i could probably stand to learn more different ways of studying reference and opening my my uh options up a little more maybe trying trying to study more from videos while they're moving just to keep some of the energy in there instead of the the details of the pose itself. Uh, my cat is meowing. I don't know if you can hear that. I think I heard it. On. I thought it was mine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, that gets picked up too much. I'll have to do something about it. No, no, no. It was very subtle. And if anything, it's it's a cat. It's cute. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, the cat always tries to get in the room, but I can't have him in here right now because he's going to be jumping all over the friggin' Aww. computer wires. 
Yeah, so the other questions are more about like how do you animate and if you want to make a little demonstration, that could be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can demonstrate for y'all. So here's kind of just like a typical layout of an animation scene that I'm working in. And right now this is a shot from Monkey Wrench, which is Zural's new animation pilot that mm -hmm. I'm working on. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun characters. And uh, so this is like a, a scene of two characters <laughs> talking. One's holding the other, getting squeezed, getting threatened. He's trying to smooth talk his way just kind of through the scene. But uh, I can kind of use this as just a demonstration to show the process. Yeah. So, so this is like the finished rough. This is what I send off to the team. But um, before that, there's all sorts of rougher passes. So let's let's get into some of the ones that are not seen by the general public. So we got. Let's see what we got here. So like we got a uh, here. Yeah, here you can see if I turn the light table on. There's here's like the, this guy named Shrike. This is Shrike's body, which I roughed in a lot messily, mm -hmm. a lot more messily at the beginning. And I go through, this is actually even not as many passes as I might usually do. I might do two or three or even more passes, depending on how complicated a scene is. So you to, to you would do like a one layer, like very rough, and then you make another layer on top? Or like do you duplicate and just erase from there? Uh, I do duplicate sometimes. A lot of times I'll just uh, start over. So like this, uh, so like this, I have one layer and then I just read through it completely to be this. And then I think... Uh, on the other character, Tymeen, the lizard here, we can uh, look at more of the passes that I did. So here we got, yeah, here's more of the face of this character who I kept a lot rougher in this stage to try and block it out a little bit before I tightened it up. Okay, I Just thought I was I was layer. the only one who used so many layers on top of each no, other. No, no, I was no, like, oh you. no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, this, this is even me holding back. Like I have other scenes where I'll, I'll go through several more passes like that just because it takes me a while to get the especially like the body language like this scene the body language doesn't change a whole lot so uh because it's like it's mostly just one pose and the head moving and then this upward like squeezing motion and then the arm which is a lot of it is just separate parts moving but uh yeah for more complicated like body movements a lot of times i will switch over or I, I I'll just do more passes than this just because I'll do a really scribbly pass and then realize, okay, the arm and the stuff isn't in the right spot, and uh, I'll have to do that again, and then I'll, I'll just make another layer and keep iterating until it looks right. And so, yeah, there's, there's documents and other scenes where I'm a lot messier than this, even. So, like, here's another... Like, yeah, here's the arm. Same, same thing. Just a very, very simple sketchy little things just to get the positioning right and the timing right and then worry about the details afterwards damn this makes me feel so much better now <laughs> yay <laughs> yeah everybody do, yeah do not feel bad about having messy documents this you, the the end result is what matters it doesn't matter how many steps it takes you to get there yeah because you see so many rough of people online and you're like you're like well what the that's their rough. My, my rough doesn't look like that. And then I'm like, maybe, maybe, maybe I should learn to like rough less roughly. But you know what? Validation. Like I got the validation I needed. I'll, I'm gonna keep my yeah. rough rough. Yeah, things. no. I'm, one of my favorite things is to make people feel better about how how messy they work. Thank like, you. We're the same. Yeah, here, here, even just like here's a scene that I've only just started. It's it's, it's like a talking scene with a little bit more, a little more body movement, but it's like. Again, this is this is just like my first pass, and here's like yeah, here's here's these frames. These are barely anything. <laughs> these are these are like chicken scratch, and like uh, you got a few cleaner ones in there. But yeah, this is this is how I start. I just start. Sometimes I'll do this and kind of like rough in a little bit cleaner like keyframes there to go along with the storyboard that I'm given. But um, yeah, a lot of times once I start like roughing in the movement, I just get the basic shape there, like there. Just I want to get it so the movement starts taking shape. Like even at this early stage, it's it's not finished yet at, or anywhere close to finished. But the arc I'm trying to kind of get in place. And I'll even like like even our friend Kevin says a good way to do it is just 
use a really big brush to not worry about the details. Oh yeah. Yeah. When I was in school, our teacher, uh, he gave us all a 6B pencil and he was like, that's the only thing you're allowed to use to rough. <laughs> and he was watching us. And right. even to this day, I still follow this advice very well. Like don't just get the movement, not the, not the details. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because it's about like bringing something to life with the, with the drawings and the movement and you're, you can very easily get bogged down in the details first and then forget to make the actual movement look good. And then you don't want to kill your drawing because it's all so beautiful that sometimes you have to kill your drawing, so don't get attached, yeah. kids. <laughs> yep, I'm trying to learn that more myself, too. Like, uh, sometimes I'll be in the flow and be like, oh, I already drew that thing and I don't want to have to erase that, so how can <laughs> I weasel my way around it? It's like, nope, just erase it. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> Not working so when you do your rough, 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 you keep it on on the same layer mostly, but after that, I see you're kind of like me for this too. You like to separate stuff with different colors and different levels. Mm -hmm. But your rough, yeah, do you tend to keep it more on one level than... Not the rough, but like that pass, like more of like the thumbnail pass that you were just talking about. Yeah, so that, it depends on like what kind of scene it is, but like for this, yeah, I'd probably keep this mostly on one layer to start with, just because I don't want to necessarily make my document a huge cluttered mess right off the bat. Yeah, because after that, it gets it gets harder to move around and stuff. I think I feel at least. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I like obviously you'll need a lot of layers for some projects, but I like to have as few as possible just because it gets easier to keep organized. Mm -hmm. but, and sometimes that's like a losing battle. Like I, I'll know that I'll need to have these things separated on layers later, and so. Sometimes I'll, I'll make more work for myself than I should by keeping it all <laughs> on as few layers as possible. That's true. But, but it is also just kind of satisfying to have everything on one layer and moving correctly. <laughs> like, because that's how you get it looking more like full Disney animation kind of, is by redrawing things a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, you also gotta, you gotta know when not to do that for a project. <laughs> you have to keep your sanity. <laughs> keep your sanity, keep your deadline. Yeah, yeah. I'll gotta, there's a lot, a lot of things that go into it. But yeah, then there's, uh, yeah, cause like for this particular cartoon, like obviously for this whole bit, like nothing is moving except his his head and neck area, <laughs> which uh, is which that was a lot of fun just because it looks really silly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I could, I could very well have just for this entire scene redrawn everything in this shot for every single frame, and that would have been a nightmare and totally unnecessary. Because, like, her staying still is part of the shot, and it wouldn't have really added anything to keep redrawing her over and over again until she starts moving here. Yeah, and I think it just makes it even, like, the gag is just funnier. Like we said before, not, not everything needs to move all the time. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, interesting. Like, yeah, just making, making everything look extra difficult to do doesn't automatically make it look better. <laughs> you gotta know when to... Because cutting corners can still be an important part of the process you got to know when to let go and when to just take the shortcuts because that's how things get finished yeah man that's such a fun scene thank you for sharing i'll have to thank zoril as well for saying yes <laughs> to sharing yeah, it yeah absolutely yeah zoril's very cool he's yeah he's letting us share works in progress of scenes to a certain point and i think it's gonna be very cool i like this project a lot i'll poke him later i hope i won't forget yeah. um Speaking of Zerl, he started using Harmony. That's great to see. Like I was in his stream yesterday, and he was like, "Oh, that's so fun! I like the, I like the colors. I like the colors too." So it was fun not not hearing or seeing like the demise of Flash crashing every five seconds. So that was yeah, pretty so he's great. Finally, turning around on that, eh? Well, he's trying it, and I I like I really like to hear his feedback because it's not often that I uh, like hang around someone who's getting to it for the first time lately. So that's I like all the feedback I can get. Yeah, I think that's good to have too, because uh, I know I try and like keep in touch on that stuff, but I've been using it for years, and I, I'm a, a very experienced in Toon Boom now, and I, I try not to touch Flash as long as I can. <laughs> but sometimes we have to, <laughs> yep, for gigs. To. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been lucky enough that I haven't had too many Flash gigs lately. My but last one was in 2016, so yeah. knock on woods. <laughs> lucky you. But uh, yeah. Again, oh, thank God. you for, for coming here. Absolutely, because... always a pleasure. Yeah, we need human contact in order to stay sane in the animation industry, mm -hmm. which is something it took me a little too long to learn. 
but Aww. I'm getting better. Yeah. We all learn. We all learn. That's the important thing. Speaking of getting in touch with people and, and learning and stuff, um, this interview is at an end, but I have one final very important question that I ask everyone every year. Um, you know, as artists, we, we tend to be a bit sensitive and sometimes things don't go too well. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, when like nothing works and, and even in, in drawing, for example, like you try to animate or you try to draw, like just nothing works. So like, what do you do in this case, mister? Not that it's the ultimate best answer, but like everybody's different. So I'm trying to get the most opinions on the matter. So, yeah. So like when, when we're feeling discouraged and stuff, when, when to... Yeah, you know, when you feel like, like, let's say, like when you feel like shit and you're like, ugh, you don't want to do anything, like nothing works. Nothing mm -hmm. is just, yeah. yeah. What do you do? <laughs> so what I, what I do is that uh, I'll, I'll take a break. I'll do something I enjoy, something calm, just like playing video games or something. And then... Uh, I'll try and some, something that really helps me lately get back in the mood is just listening to music that inspires me. So uh, either that or a movie or a show that inspires you is always a good way to get the, get the gears turning. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and then also just try uh, getting good uh, art friends to talk with and maybe do some projects with or just hang out and do a Magna Studio or draw pile or something like that. Yeah. Just draw together, do a little... Just little activities, just something to try something different or get a like a change of pace going. That'll at least kind of reset your brain a little bit and get you back in the mood for drawing something. Because I know it, it, can, it absolutely can get um, uh, mind-numbing just to draw things constantly. And then you're just like, you know what? No, I, I don't feel like drawing anymore. <laughs> and that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a discouraging feeling, but you, can, you absolutely, you can and will get past it as long as you push through it, try some new things. Yeah, it's so important yeah, yeah. to just take a break, and I, I would like just push it away, be like, oh no, I'm just gonna take a break later and later, and the more you push it, the less work you get done, because you're not in the mood for it, and you should have taken a break like 15 minutes ago, but you didn't. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've that, but doing that the wrong way plenty of times, mm -hmm. just like, oh, I'll just, I'll just put it off till later, and then, you know, like, oh, I'll, I'll draw later, and then I don't. And yeah. then it's like, you got it's, it's better to like take like healthy breaks, not just a, a gigantic uh, sabbatical or whatever oh yeah take breaks it's important and uh yeah, don't, don't stare at your screen working for uh, eight hours straight without drinking a cup of water yeah and thank you for for that and the last thing is do you have uh and that's more for me like do you have something to that you wanted to give this year mm -hmm. yeah so i don't have anything super duper fancy but i do have like an updated set of my tomb boom brushes that oh. I can give oh that's that cool yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to try them out. Yeah, so I, yeah, I got some of my bitmap brushes, some vector brushes, a couple of pencils which I haven't used in a while. Oh, nice! <laughs> but yeah, so if, if y'all want to get your grubby little mitts on those, then feel free. Hmm. So, so yeah, thank you for being part of the Winterfest thingy this year again. I really appreciate, and this was very, very interesting, and I'm pretty sure lots of people are going to be happy. Absolutely, I hope that people are happy on this uh, lovely holiday. <laughs> So to all the people who commented last year, we wanted to see how how people animate, not why they animate. And so I hope now you're happy. You get to see a real scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Freaking be happy, why don't you? <laughs> and leave me alone now. So. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for coming by, and I'll see you. I'll talk to you later, uh, alligators. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you.